two old rigs out in the Simpson Desert. And a couple of cars. <laughs> and, a couple, and a couple of vehicles in Jocko. <laughs> so we're gonna go into detail how we've got our rigs ready yep. to come on an adventure just like this. Took the canopy off and chuck some tray sides on. I've got no 12 volt, no fancy electrics, no fridge, and I've got about 300 litres of fuel, plus over 100 litres of water. For fuel, I'm not running a single jerry. No Oh, jerry. no, you're not. No, no, no. no. I'm not. As, as you've got an ingenious thing. Crikey, Jock is having a fail right now. He's <laughs> having a big fail. We've lost him. We've got a prize champion. <laughs> well, how's the backdrop, boys? Unreal, mate. Simpson Unreal. Desert, my friends. I can't wait any longer. Let's have a beer. Cheers, guys. I already, guys. Cool. I already cracked one. Sorry, Cheers, boys. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Jock. <laughs> that right behind us there, well, it's a couple of old cars, but behind that you'll see some quintessential sand dunes. They're red in colour with a bit of green foliage on top. You don't find that too many other places. The Simpson Desert, mate. Simo. We are halfway on a trip, I'd like to say, we've dreamed up years ago. We're finally doing it. Yep. And it's an absolute cracker. Two old rigs out in the Simpson Desert. And a couple of cars. <laughs> and, a and a couple of vehicles and Jocko. <laughs> yeah, and I'm here too. Hello. <laughs> We're uh, an absolute blast. Obviously, we've got the G60, we've got the farm truck. We're doing a wild Simpson Desert we crossing. We might let the cat out of the bag. I'm not going to go in the details, but quite a bit so far. let's just say it's not your average Simpson crossing. There's it's, a lot going on. There's a, there's a, just imagine, look, can I give this away? Here you go. Imagine doing Sydney to Brisbane, but not getting higher than 25 k's an hour. That's incorrect. I hit 30 today. Did ya? Yep, I hit 30. Then Speed I had to slow the heck back down. Cheers, that, mate. That. Cheers mate. <laughs> but this is a Beers in the Shed episode, so of course we've got a We've got a hot topic, which is actually, uh, it's going to yep. be a great one. We're actually going to show you around our rigs. So we're going to go into detail how we've got our rigs ready yep. to come on an adventure just as like this. And Not just us, though. Of course, everyone there's on the trip. There's, yeah. And there's a few that you, you can't see. There's Pete in the big GU. There's also as in the 79. <laughs> Jocko is driving the D-Max, a yep. support vehicle. Support vehicle, yeah, yep. that's why I'm here, to make sure For these guys support. behave themselves. <laughs> and emotional well. I'm just happy to be involved, really. I'm just glad to be here. And the cool thing, of course, we're going to go into your shed. We're going to show you a bunch of fails. We've also got a bunch of prizes mm -hmm. and also a couple of really cool giveaways. Cracker. All that and Absolute more. Absolute cracker. I reckon we waste no time. Get Let's up. talk about this one. Let's talk about our rigs and how we got them here. Well, mate, I reckon you should go first. And the okay. reason I say that is because the first vehicle to ever cross the Simpson Desert, oh, of don't. course, it was, was a camel. It was, it was a camel. <laughs> but after that, they downgraded to a G60. <laughs> <laughs> yes, some might say it's a downgrade, and there's those that know the wise ones amongst us. I'll give you this one tip, though. If you do own a G60, and, you, and you, like you've said, mm -hmm. maybe you've got another car at home, maybe a Prius, Something like that. Take the Prius. <laughs> Far more comfortable. I'd rather Far more camel. comfortable. Yeah, look. I think a camel would be pretty comfortable. Well, I reckon you should let everyone at home know how you got the G60 ready for such a trip like this. Yes. You, you got any crazy mods going on? Let's go right back. We'll go right back like to it, the beginning. <laughs> no, no, she's bare bones, mate. Right back to the beginning. We picked this vehicle up in a farmer's field in Tasmania a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, drove all around Tassie, then got it back to the mainland, drove the Cape, and then brought it here. And That's technically, true. we haven't done very much at all. I've got no 12 volt. No fancy electrics, no fridge. I've just got the G60. What have we done to get it ready for this trip? Obviously, I've got the spare fuel tank in the back. I think I've got an 80 series fuel tank sub in yeah, there. I, yeah, it looks like an 80 series that's sub. That's the reliability that's, element of the G60 yeah. coming through. It actually has been remarkably reliable. <laughs> so the way the sub tank works is we've got a sub tank up a little bit higher than the main tank, and I've got a little 12 volt ticky ticky pump. I don't know what they're called. You turn the ticky ticky pump on. Inline pump, probably. Inline yeah, pump would yeah. work. <laughs> Sucks fuel out of the top one. Then I turn it off, and it just gravity feeds the whole day. Simple and it works an absolute treat. Other than that, did you know we put a new clutch in the car? I didn't know that. Yeah, we had to put a new clutch in the car, which has made it not that much easier to get back into first. Yeah, yeah. No so, synchros. So, so how many gears you got? Four. You got four gears? Yeah, four. One's reverse. One's yeah. reverse. Including mm -hmm. reverse, yeah, yeah. Yeah, three forward gears. Mm -hmm. And the secret I found, and it's made life so much easier, is to drive everything out here in low range and mm -hmm. only change between third and second. Because mm -hmm. I can do that a lot easier than coming back into first. So it's been a dream, but I've got nothing, man. I've got a couple of spotlights on the front. Swag in the back. Well, Jock's going to take my swag because we're scared about fuel. For everyone at home wondering, being a six-cylinder old-school straight six petrol, mm -hmm. I reckon I'm averaging about 18 litres per hundred. Which through is the remarkable. Simpson. Yeah. That's not through too the bad. Simpson. Yeah. Uh, what am I carrying? I've got uh, Jocko's helping me. He's got five of my Jerry's. I've got five Jerry's, so there's 10 Jerry's. I've also got a sneaky 50 litres in that back tray you've got on the back there in two Jerry cans. Uh, so all up, I've got just under 300 litres of fuel, and I reckon I'm going to take some of that home with me. That's not bad at all, yeah, is it? pretty stoked with that. For your sleeping arrangements, how do you how do, you do that? Well, Jock gets on the top of the D-Max and he passes me down my swag. And then Jocko and I have both got the same little tarp that we set up. And yeah, I'm just we chucking them together. We did. Mm -hmm. And I'm just chucking a swag up next to the car there. 
Uh, the boys won't let me sleep anywhere near them because apparently I snore. <laughs> you do. Yeah. Apparently I make some terrific noises. This is at the night. crazy thing. The G60 is noisy all day. Graham's noisy all night. So, <laughs> and I can't hear because it's that noisy inside the cab. And in the I'm morning they both cough and fart and sputter when they try and get up. <laughs> it's true. They're, they're very similar, true. in fact. They always say, like, you almost represent the vehicle you drive. <laughs> look at my, <laughs> my jumper and look at the paint job on that thing. Yeah. I am morphing, I'm morphing into the G60, mate. I don't know. In that vehicle, and you'll be the same in yours, you start to become the track. You know every bump. You feel every bump. Mm. You're knackered at the end of the day. Your shoulders hurt. Your back's a bit knackered. It's so much different to doing it. I've done it in all manner of vehicle now, so have you. Mm -hmm. To do it in an old truck that you, you've got a double clutch coming into sand dunes. You've got to get it right. Yeah. It's just a different way of doing the Simpson I, Desert. I can't agree more, mate. I, I, I have to have two hands on that wheel yep. at all times. At all times. If, if you think for a second you can just reach down and grab your drink bottle and have a quick tell, swig of water while you're trying to do it. Tell you them what happened today. <laughs> multiple times. I was trying to eat peanuts and I had to shell them. <laughs> and that was really hard. I was spilling all the shells everywhere. But every time I did that and took my concentration off, I'd be halfway up a sand dune and then... I'd just, Nearly rolled it, it yesterday. I know. It's, it's embarrassing. And you're trying to get a drink of water... You just need to have two hands at all times. Drink what? and eat when you stop the vehicle. You know, you'd think we've got probably nearly 40 years of outback experience and off-road experience between the two of us. You would think that our car snacks would be something super <laughs> easy that you could just grab and shove in your mouth. No. No. What we've chosen is sh unshelled peanuts. Yep. Ever shelled a peanut with one hand? Difficult. Very difficult. And the other snack I've chosen is pistachios. Getting those suckers out of, your, out of the shell or you're double clutching up a sand dune. It's Next level. super hard. It so that's, that's all the mods you got. What about spares? How'd you, how'd you go in the spare department? Well, as you know, the G60, you've seen inside the engine bay. It is the simplest vehicle out there. So I've got mm -hmm. the one hose that I need. I've got the one belt that I need. And that's it. Some that's oil. All. That's all. That's Well, we did not We did almost need some oil when I got under the vehicle. Uh, we won't go to too much detail. I did notice an, an oil leak. You'll see how he fixed it. I can't believe what he used <laughs> to fix my oil leak. If I told you now, you wouldn't believe it. Wouldn't believe it, but you'll get to see the whole thing. You'll see the whole thing, I, but yeah. I think when you drive an old vehicle through the bush, you've got to be semi-resourceful, yeah, I think, yeah. and, and slightly creative as well. If you're coming up with bush mechanic fixes, um, yep. that's why you don't really need that many spares. The cool thing with old trucks and- Not much this, can go wrong. Not much can go wrong. And if it does go wrong, you'll always nearly get home if you're yeah. semi-creative on how yeah. you can fix a vehicle. To give you an idea, if, if your next- plan with the ugga dugga hadn't worked. You know what I'm talking about. Mm. These guys at home won't. I was thinking maybe we just get a bit of gidgy mm -hmm. and carve that down till it's roughly, and there's torque that in there. You could have. And yeah. that, that's, that's what's cool about old trucks is you can just use what's around you to get home. I think the next thing I'm going to move forward, the next thing I want to do with this old car in honor of Reg is get it back to its white paint. Really? Yeah, I want to put some white paint on it rather than <laughs> the farmer's old camouflage paint. Yeah, that's good because yeah. it's an Probably eyesore at the moment. It is an eyesore at the moment, I must admit. Yeah, it doesn't look the best. But that's it, mate. I've got, yeah, two spare tyres on the back. Okay. That's me. That's you. Yeah. Well, I'll jump into the farm truck, mate. Um, obviously, second in the, in the convoy. Mm -hmm. Just behind the G60, the big farm truck. Now you've seen me again, like just like the G60, the farm truck has done a stack of miles beforehand. I've actually done quite a few trips now in that vehicle. Yeah, I've done the Cape yep. twice, once with you yep. in there. I've done some hard tracks in Coffs, Coffs Harbour. Harbour. With you, you brought the farm truck yep. to Coffs Harbour. I nearly rolled off the side of a mountain one time and I yep. wasn't in it. I remember, remember that? that? Yep. <laughs> I've done a bunch of well, new trips in an old truck, yep. I suppose, and now the Simpson Desert. And I've been, look, you and I have over many beers for years have dreamed, dreamed about this yep. trip doing this one and we've always wanted to do it the g60 and the farm track probably before we even owned those vehicles That's we thought, true, how actually. cool would that That's be true. Yep. and uh here we are actually doing it now the mods i've done to this vehicle it's actually a couple of cool little ones i had it in the shed for a little bit before i got to come up here um i'll start just with the basics there's an awning on the side that's luxury so i've got an awning that's a full 180 degree bushwhacker awning that's pretty cool because at the end of the day, you can set that up. You can go underneath yep. your swag. It just gives you a nice little living environment. I've just yep. got the swag on the ground. It's real simple stuff. You'll notice the swag is on top of the rig. That's because I've made basically a homemade sort of ladder rack system, I guess you'd call it. I don't know. Basically, you've got some um, 25 by 25 RHS and just welded a couple of little bars on the back there. Just Did make you get that, sorry to interrupt, yeah. that distance just to fit your swag? I did, and the Max Tracks. So you'll notice the Max Tracks are up the top there because I wanted them easy to get to. Yep. Because one of the big dramas in the farm truck is because it's just a tray and everything sits in the tray, when you need something out, it's actually a pain. So yep. I've got ratchet straps holding everything. So I wanted the things that I'm going to use, like the... It gets bogged a lot, get, so I'm getting the Max Tracks bit. off, yeah. So we, we got the Max Tracks, they're nice and easy to get. And the, because I'm, they're up the top, I find when I get bogged in sand, the vehicle comes down about two foot, usually. So I can reach 
the max tracks up the top. That's smart. Little that's things thinking. like that. That's thinking. Um, the swags up there, one of the main reasons the swags up the top is because I'm carrying a lot of diesel. And yeah. if I had a diesel leak, and I've had this happen before in the yeah, cave, yep. where my, all my bedding got ruined from yep. diesel, I didn't want that to happen again. So yep. the swag sits up the top there. I might just butt in. That's why Jock's carrying my swag, because I've got all the petrol on the back. If mm. that goes through your bedding, as you can imagine, it's, 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 it's yeah. a drama. It's a, it's a nightmare. It's a yeah. drama. So that's where mine sits. For fuel, I'm not running a single jerry. No Oh, jerry. no, you're not. No, no, no. no. I'm not. You've got an ingenious it's, thing. It's quite cool. I was actually, okay, beforehand, we went talking over a few beers on how we're going to carry enough fuel. Mm. For me, I thought I'm going to carry a 44-gallon drum on the back. So was I. You're going to do the same. And um, I was actually struggling to get a 44 at home that was clean enough for fuel. Uh, and um, and then I was like thinking, if I put a 44, the best way to sit that would be up against the headboard. Yeah. Very possible would have to move the spare tyre. And then I looked around the shed and I have a 200 litre fuel bladder, which I actually use for the boat. And um, so it holds diesel mm -hmm. and it's just a big old bladder. No one really uses bladders these days, but it just fit perfectly in the middle does. of the tray, yep. kept the weight nice and low and in between the axles. So it's a 200 litre fuel bladder plus my 65 litres, whatever the farm truck sort of holds. So 265 litres of diesel, that'll get me through the Simo. But here's a cool trick we're using. The first day, mm -hmm. we allowed me, he was full of fuel, I was full of fuel, allowed me to completely run out. Mm -hmm. Then we looked on his fuel gauge to see where his fuel gauge was I've, when I ran out. the only working fuel gauge. He's got the only us. working fuel gauge. So now he'll just get on the radio and go, oi, you might want to take a look at yourself, you're about to run out of fuel. <laughs> exactly Because right. I've got no idea. So yeah. he's my fuel gauge. Exactly right. And it works. And um, and obviously I can I can monitor my fuel, which is, it's been pretty good, pretty good consumption. Oh, I'm, you're doing well, yeah. I'm thinking about 15 litres maybe to yep. the 100. I haven't really worked it out yet, but I know I've got mobs of mobs of diesel. Yep. And um, so to get the diesel into my tank, um, I've got a, basically a hose set up that works quite well. It's about inch sort of thick hose that runs this clear fuel hose. And um, I've got a bunch of like T valves on it. And then I've got an inline fuel pump on an Anderson plug. My fridge runs an Anderson plug. So I unplug the fridge quickly, put the, the Anderson plug for my fuel pump in. It starts pumping fuel. And then I just turn it off when I need to. And um, it's just like being at a Bowser. I've got it down. It's actually faster, I think. Oh, yeah, it's just, it's really fast. Yep. It's like a little high flow setup. And um, I can fuel up just by myself really easy. And um, it's it sort of sort of just works. It works really well. It, it just works really well. And, and the cool thing it, with the fuel bladder, of course, is when you start to run out of fuel and um, you, you completely use that fuel bladder, you'll be able to roll that thing up and get all your tray space back. I'm kind of gutted that you've got the inline pump. My idea when you said you're going to take 200 litres of diesel in basically a wine bladder <laughs> yeah, was that you'd have to same. suck on that hose yep. and then the pressure from 200 litres of diesel. I was, as you, you do the math in your head, I was looking forward to the <laughs> before you could put it in his tank. <laughs> no, Unfortunately, no. he's a little smarter than it, that. It works quite well. Um, the other cool little thing, and this is something I've always wanted to do the farm truck, and I just had a little bit of time before I came on this trip, is on the drop down side, yep. I've just put a couple of um, little, little pieces, I guess, of, of wire, which I've looped around and crimped. So the, the tray side folds down as a table. Put a little bit of checker plate on there yep. as well with a few rivets. And um, I've got a beautiful little table. So every morning when I'm making a coffee, I can just, I've got a little table. It's the little things I suppose. That's bloody yeah. Yeah. It's just the little things like that. And because I've used like 800 pound wire, like quite thick wire, um, it's actually fishing stuff. Yep. And I've, I've crimped that all together. I can actually stand on that as well. So it makes a little platform if I need to climb up. And then what apart from that, this has actually come from the farm truck. I've just got everything in space cases, um, ratcheted down. It, look, it's a bit of a pain when I need to get something out really quickly. Yeah. You know, you want to get some lunch out and you're like, oh, all right, I'll just undo the tarp off the back. Then I've got to get the ratchet straps, get into the space cases. It's a little bit of a pain, but when you get to camp, you can sort of just unleash everything and yeah. uh, make a bit of a mess. You sort of got to repack the truck every day. That's... And um, look, you're not going to have the same luxuries you might have in like sooty or something no. like that with no. drawers and all you can get to all your gear really easy. But it sort of works, and I'm running a really minimalistic setup. I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying going back to that utter bare bones. You yeah. Know? I mean, my air conditioning is the two flaps on the front of the thing. Yep. The problem with that is the dust just billows in. Yeah, the dust has been a bit of an issue. Um, the dry outback heat, I'm used to humidity where <laughs> I live, and um, I've just come back from the Cape as well. So when I got the first day, everything just dried right up. I was like a prune. Yeah, he was, he was complaining about his eyes were dry and everything yeah, was drying yeah, up. Was, you I'm actually get of, some really nasty bush boogers out here too. Yeah, Because yeah, the dust. The dust. Yeah, yeah, you pick your nose, you get, yeah, no dust. Out, but, but apart from that, mate, I've got a couple of mechanical dramas which I'm nursing at the moment. Hopefully they don't become too much of an issue. And in terms of spares, again, just like you, mate, I've got the basics. Look, I could have brought CVs and all the rest of it yeah, but, you're not gonna but with an old truck like that even if you break a CV you no break an axle a tail shaft falls out a diff blows up guess what you're in two wheel drive you can always get home you'll get home that's my theory anyway yeah, definitely. Definitely. You're right. that's you're about right. me mate and look I, yeah the two old trucks I'm just frothing on driving them mm -hmm. the both of us it's funny you'll see it when, when, the, when, the, when the episode comes out we'll do two hours roughly that's about our max we can do in a row oh, yeah. two hours 
and we both get out and we look, I mean, I'm getting there, but we look like old men. <laughs> yeah. We're hunched. We actually lay on the ground occasionally and yeah, just straighten the back. Stretch there. out, the stretch out. It has been tough. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, it's made this trip super tough. But at the end of the day, when you're camped in the desert, it's probably the best camping you'll ever do in your lifetime. Oh, look at this. Get some gidgey wood, get a fire going. It's unreal. And you yeah. sit back and reflect on the day. It makes it all that more rewarding. The sun's just going down now. Have a go at the colours out there. I know. And it's this magic. is yeah, superb. Yeah. And of course, we have Jocko in the D-Max. Lots He's, been done. He <laughs> is our recovery yeah. slash support. Support, support vehicle. vehicle. Yeah, mate. It's been it's been a good one. I've been uh, very excited for this trip for a long time. And uh, being in the D-Max support vehicle, had to kind of change the setup. Obviously, got the Mitz Alloy Canopy on the tray there that we run for all the trips. But um, decided it would be good as a support vehicle to carry fuel for everyone and water and um other bits and pieces, lots of tools and things. So yep. took the canopy off, it was actually real easy. Um, yeah. Just a couple of bolts, pulled it off um, before, left it in Brizzy and chucked some tray sides on. And that's enabled me to use the whole tray. And I've got about 300 litres of fuel plus over 100 litres of water. I've got uh, all my tools, spares, recovery gear. Mm. In the, I've got some uh, tread boxes on the back that have got all my food and all my tools and stuff in there. I've got everything I need, but there's also the extra storage that's still on the tray anyway. I didn't lose that. So I've still been able to use bits and pieces in the tray, which has been mint. It's been unreal. I, I was thinking today that it, this so far is my favourite trip I've ever done in the D-Max. I've just been, I've been loving it. It's yeah, been great. And fair enough too. I've got to say one thing. Firstly, I love the look of the new D-Max. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It yeah. looks sick. But secondly, we're both running similar setups in. We've got trays on the back of our rigs, but you just seem to carry so much more stuff. You've got so much little extra storages mm. with it. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, the trundle drawer. Well, there's the boxes it. underneath. There's like, a rear pull-out drawer. Yep. Like, yeah. I there's... wish I had that stuff because it's easy to access and you've got all your stuff still tied down. You have to take ratchet straps off. Well, I'm jealous like, of the trundle every morning. Yeah. Mm. That's, when I look across at him making breakfast in the morning, I'm jealous yeah. of the trundle. Well, yeah, because the pull-out drawer's got that table on the top that makes it so easy. And, yeah. and to be honest, when I pulled the canopy off back in Brizzy, I was thinking, this oh, is you know, this is going to be interesting because it's all just fuel, yep. but I've been able to store so much stuff in there. And you're not, you're not without a fridge or 12 volt, so you've got everything I need. Yeah, everything that's in the I back. Need. Yeah, I've just, yep. I've just moved things into the back yep. of the car. So I've just got a fridge in there yep. um, just for cold beers right. and stuff. You know, the, the, the ingenious idea about having your fridge in the back seat is you can central lock the vehicle and keep yeah. buggers like this out of your fridge. Yeah, big Well, time. no, not on this trip because I'm sharing it with him. Yeah, so I have a legit putting, reason. Okay, stuff in well, there. I just feel a bit vulnerable because mine's out in the tray, that's all. I'm, I'm just saying it out now. But now I can lock it and I've I can been, get been into the fridge. my beers. Mine are the ones with the, that have been shaking really heavily <laughs> in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can tell when they're Sean's. But yeah, I mean, it's been... I mean, I'm living in luxury. I've got aircon on. I was listening to a podcast chugging along and the car's so good on fuel too. It just was... Yep motoring along it's been unreal just following you guys and being recovery vehicle although i think i could have done a better job on that the other day <laughs> <laughs> that was laughable but we got there in the end we did we did You'll get there it. We'll we did it. get there in the end i reckon we throw to the other guys in the convoy because we we've got some watching. pretty cool setups so i reckon we chuck over to pete now and uh, let's have a look at the big gu and how he got it desert ready hey guys how you going long story short i haven't done a lot um, i travel pretty lightly swag stretcher fridge etc a couple of extra things I have done though for this trip is uh, an extra tyre on the roof just in case. It's just a carcass, it's not rimmed, but just in case I, I run into a bit of trouble there, it gives you a bit of peace of mind. Fuel was the other consideration. I'm running standard tanks in here, which I think is probably around 120 litres. But lucky I've got Jock in the D-Max who's agreed to, to carry an extra 100 litres for me. So a bit of peace of mind there, but still managing fuel. We're out here for a while. Probably the biggest addition to the car is because we're remote for so long. So I'm, I'm travelling with some extra water. I've got about 80 litres on board. Extra food and of course the, the important stuff, beer. You know, that's a real consideration. You've got to ration your beer out here. There's not like the pubs down the road so internally that's what I've had to squeeze in there but apart from that the, the setups remain pretty much un, unchanged uh, anyway that's it for me back to you guys well in true Pete fashion mate he's absolutely nailed his setup as always just cruising along absolute weapon minimalistic doesn't yep. matter if he's in the Coffs Harbour or the Simpson Desert keeps it simple and it works yeah, well thought totally. out though yeah, yeah minimalistic that's it. but well thought mm -hmm. out yep, yep. speaking of well thought out though I'm not the only Mitz Alloy uh, set up in the convoy we've got <laughs> Az as well with his big 79 and that thing is just built to come out here yep. oh thanks boys so yeah we're out here in the Simpson Desert it's absolutely beautiful and I I'll tell you what I feel for Shawno in the old Land Cruiser being in this it's pretty bouncy myself but in those old trucks, oh, I can't imagine what it's like being in those things. Getting this truck ready for this sort of trip has been a big thing. You know, we had a short turnaround in between the Cape York trip and the Simpson Desert trip. Mate, I've done a lot of work on this thing. So underneath and the front, we rebuilt the swivel hubs, did all the bushes, everything, diff oils, 
Transfer case oils, you know, we even rebuilt the rear diff. It was that crazy up at Cape York just to get it ready for this trip. You know, bearings all around, disc brakes. I've had a little bit of an electrical gremlin up front and there's things that are starting to go on at the moment, but I won't say too much about that because you gotta stay tuned. But put the big 1700 canopy on it. I've got the big 130 litre upright fridge. I've even got a secondary freezer, which I'm keeping a stack of meat for all the boys because you know, Graham doesn't even have a fridge on his truck. So I'm keeping all his meat in the freezer as well. And then, you know, I've got the drawer and table set up, just everything ready for two weeks in the Simpson Desert. We've got to keep a heap of stuff. I'm carrying an extra 40 litres of water on top of the 90 litres that I'm already carrying underneath the tray. And then Jocko is carrying two jerry cans for me and I've even got two on the back. So it's been a massive effort getting this thing Simpson ready. Back to you boys and stay tuned for this one. Should be pretty good. Well, I've got to say, I'm a big fan of as a setup. And yep. I know you boys are as well, because there wouldn't be a single day that goes by we don't borrow something out of the back no. of that canopy. He's mm -hmm. done so much work to get that vehicle ready for this trip. It's been unreal. Yeah, it I'm really gonna, is. I'm going to say it. I like the sound of it. It is a cool thing. I, I get a little bit uh, ute envy when, mm -hmm. when he drives past. Yeah, because mine sounds like a fart in a bottle. <laughs> 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 well, the good news is, guys, you can watch this whole Simpson adventure. Um, on YouTube, of course, because yep. we're filming the whole thing. You're going to see it. it's going to be a cracker trip, one of the best ones of the year. Um, we've actually got our Cape trips coming up really soon, yeah, so you yep. get to enjoy us being the first up Cape York for the year up the telly track. We did some wild stuff up there, so the content just keeps getting better and better, in my opinion. And uh, here's a bit you guys are going to absolutely love because our mates over at Forex have got a bunch of merch packs to give away. So all you have to do to win a merch pack, and we'll make it really easy. Go on. You do a question. Go on. You do a question. Oh, how, okay, can, how, okay, can they, okay. how can they win a merch pack? All you got to do is uh, in the comments down below, let us know what your essential uh, remote area touring mod would be. Oh, essential. Yeah. I don't want to know something like a long range tank. We all know that. I'm thinking a coffee machine. Not that. <laughs> anything except anything except that. Jock, you're on the spot right now. Go. Sun cream. Oh, it's not really a that's mod. Actually, <laughs> it's, not, it's a mod if you've got uh, pale oh, you Scottish could, you skin, could, mate. You could hook your compressor up to a sun cream <laughs> <laughs> and just, and just airbrush that. you. That, that would win. That. That My would skin win. drinks it. <laughs> Let yep. us know the best mod for remote area touring Yep. and uh, be a little bit creative, mm -hmm. have a bit of fun with it, and we'll go through and pick the best ones to win a 4X merch pack. And just a little hint, make sure you turn on your notifications on YouTube yep. so you don't miss out. Because if you win, we'll notify you via YouTube. If you've got your notifications turned on, you'll know straight away that we've said, hey, you've won a merch pack. Guess what? That's the best way to do it. So just turn the, it takes two seconds. Just hit the old notifications button and uh, good luck. Rightio, every shed we do a deal. I reckon we do some of the best deals in the, the Google webs. We really do. This month's deal is brought to you by none other than the ginger ninja himself. <laughs> Jocko. Jocko. Thanks, mate. Well, it is an absolute cracker. It's from our mates at Razorback, and uh, it's for their end of financial year stock run out. So if you want a new set of seat covers for your four drive, now is the time because for 10 days only, June 21st to 30th, you can get up to 30% off a set of Razorback seat covers for your four drive. So up to 30% off canvas covers and up to 20% off neoprene covers know how good they are we've been running yep. them for years and yep. absolutely froth them they're also going to be chucking in free shipping and uh next day dispatch as well not so true. unreal but if you want a set make sure you jump on it quick because it's not going to last very long just go to razorback4x4.com.au and get yourself a brand new set of seat covers for your four drive wish they made them for really 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 old cars they do they make them for just about every model of four drive out there Can including the old farm truck yep. really? and guess what the first thing i'm doing when i get home is oh that'd be nice yeah, Ooh, i wish i did it before this trip mm -hmm. to be honest because those seats are disgusting i spilled all manner of things in there today mate not going into it <laughs> Not mentioning at all. <laughs> Guys, when you're out in the bush, you need to be able to get yourself out of sticky situations. That's why we've got an epic recovery deal. When you bundle a snatch recovery kit with a set of Max Tracks, in my opinion, the ultimate little recovery kit, well, you're going to be able to save 50% off your Snatch Recovery Kit. That's a saving of 215 bucks. And while we're on the topic of your recovery, you want to make sure you guys have the right kit in your four-wheel drive. That's why you can save up to 25% site-wide on all recovery gear. That includes brands like Snatch, Max Tracks, and of course, Runba. Do yourself a favour, head to fourwheeldrive247.com. 
one of my favourite bits, of course, is when we go from our shed, Absolutely. or in this case, the Simpson Desert, you into your mate. shed. We find out what you're doing, how you're doing it, and more importantly, we have a look at your rigs, I'm, all mm -hmm. the cool stuff. I'm going to drive this, mate, because my arm's just right if here. If we can, so let's go to the first one here, Blake's Great. Bush Mechanic Fix. Have a go at that one, Graham. Rightio, so Blake was out <sighs> crabbing one day. Obviously, the track getting in was a bit wild and woolly. Uh, he's busted the everything. He said this bolt <laughs> snapped in half. He had no tools to fix it. So as you can see down here, if you use a really good eyesight, which I have, <laughs> you can actually see that he's used some blocks of wood underneath to brace everything. Brilliant. Held it in place with some million miles an hour tape. And I'm guessing the trip out was pretty slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I Couple wonder if a crab snapped these U-bolts came up. And <laughs> I big big yeah. muddies in Queensland. Big muddies. Because in Queensland, that could have happened, mate. Mm -hmm. Could but have. It goes to show you've got to be a bit resourceful. He, look, everyone might be saying, use tie wire, use something else. Didn't no, have it didn't probably. Have it. So yep. he's got duct tape, use that. And yep. if that gets you home, that's a big thumbs up for me, mate. that's a ratchet strap there too. Yeah, it is too. It is yeah. too. That's a ratchet strap. Yep. That'll work. Blake, genius. Yep. He probably, has, he probably hasn't even fixed it, mate. It's still going. It's still cool. going. What have we got here? A little bloke's bogged. Looks like Cameron's little man getting into off-roading early. That is epic. Look at that. How cool is that? Is that a little Hilux or something? Uh, it looks like it, yeah. Yeah, bogged as usual, so it yeah. is a Hilux. Yeah. And look, it's the same size as my boat as well. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's fishing. That's pretty yeah. darn cool. That's cool. Boat. That's sick. Yeah, that's oh, it really, really cool. is cool. He's got, a mo he's got a little bike on the back too. Yeah, something that's going to tell me that um, he's going to take our job one day because yep. he's yeah. into it early. Look, he's got all his sponsor stickers yeah, on the windscreen. <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. <laughs> Can't even see that windscreen uh, does not matter. What a legend. Well, I reckon we get into a couple of fails now because, let's face it, we love fails. Everyone loves fails. Yep. And I just want to... Pause for two seconds. Go. If you fail, you could win a prize. So you the simple fail, way win. to maybe win a prize is to jump onto your socials, upload it, and use the hashtag 4 drive 24 7 fails And that way, we'll find it, yep. and hopefully show your fail to millions of people, and uh, maybe you'll win a prize. Now, this is Todd on TikTok, and he sent this video through to us. Have a look at this one. This has actually happened to me a couple of times. It's not yeah, failed. Patrol yeah. wheel stud snap. Well, not in a patrol. I've had them on cruises too. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's no good at all. It's very scary when it happens. <laughs> he's come He's come a long way. I know, I know. Do you remember that one in the Dane Tree? I when do, and then you lost it and you <laughs> drove <laughs> off in full I was, I was really angry. Yep. But um, that, that usually what happens when a wheel comes off no, at I'd high speed. Too. At yep. high speed. Yeah. Well, luckily, no one's injured, though. Todd, I hope that never happens to you again, mate. Mm. Ooh, Darcy. Bit of an interesting Friday night drive. Slipped into a rather large, yes, you could say that, a rather <laughs> large, a rather rut. large I like, rut. I like how people in like really big vehicles, like rather large, like mm. that would swallow a prey. That's me thing. gone. You'd never yeah. see me again if I fell in that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it just, it's not even very wide. You could you could hop across it, but he's just fitting in yeah. there perfectly. He's got he's got all the bar work for it though. It looks like he popped back out and just drove home. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. And an old rig like that, it's designed to go on its side a few I, times. Yeah. I think, he, yeah, a bit left hand, he almost could have come out of it. But yeah. he's got some interesting webbing and rigging to get out of there. Yeah, you'd like that, Jocko. Epic uh, recovery. Yes, sir. Look, Look at that. Like that. Moving right along. Ooh. Oh, oh echoes of coughs from someone's. <laughs> that's not uh, that's not how you have a barbecue. No, exactly right. You're supposed to have your campfire when you get to camp. Not champion. in the engine bay. Well, I can't really talk. Those happened to me recently. <laughs> What's going on, mate? It's not that funny. No, Actually, awesome. a serious situation. Yeah. But someone has an engine fire. You mate. could get, you get hurt. <laughs> you want to do his laugh? Uh, Why? <laughs> Crikey, Jock is having a fail right now. He's, He's having a big fail. <laughs> We've lost him. Got him win a prize, champion. <laughs> You're okay. There we go. Wait for him. <laughs> <laughs> what is so funny, mate? Oh, come on. Oh, that's not his name, surely. That's not his name. Yeah, Booger. That's, that's his Christian name. He's, yeah, Booger Moore. His, his last name is Moore. Yeah, Moore. <laughs> right, so Booger. Uh, Booger's had a bit of a fire in the old engine bay. Mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> it's tickled Jock's fancy quite a lot, as you can see. It's actually scary. For someone who's had an engine fire, I can speak from experience. Yeah, you don't want um, that. Exactly right. I've got to say, Booger, you... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Booger, is that your real name? Booger! I don't even know what's funny. I'm just laughing because he's laughing. Right into us and let us know, I'm going to say, you've won the biggest engine fire of the, of the year award. Oh. Mr. Moore. We'll call mm -hmm. you from now on. Absolutely. Let's get on to another one. What about Jesse? Book for short. Jesse. Jesse's fail. Ah. Jesse from TikTok. Found out the hard way not to drive in floodwaters. Yeah, look mm. at it. That's disgusting looking water too. I know, and it's ruined a really nice vehicle too. I want to put a little safety message out there. Go. Um, Speak it. If it's flooded, forget it. Mm. Why do we drive through them then? Oh, because we're mad dogs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I reckon Booger would have made it out of that. <laughs> he wouldn't have had a problem with it. <laughs> well, this is another TikTok user. Um, he's got the old saying, pack it up and pack it on. I don't I, really know what that means, I think but that's, uh, I guess I guess the family brought all the recovery gear to mm -hmm. Fraser Island. They had to use it just to get in, getting towed off the towed barge. Towed off the barge. I know, and that's that's a bit of a fail. Like, it really is. You've, you've, everyone lines up and oh, watches got a, people coming off the barge, right? you got a flat right? battery. You couldn't get off the barge. 
I know it's embarrassing. I've had I've had a similar thing happen on well, not really very different, but off, <laughs> off the spirit of Tassie, I blew a rear deer. Oh, that's right. And I had to get towed off the <laughs> off the spirit of Tassie. That's yeah. super embarrassing. Yeah, that's not. That's good. a big fail. Well, as always, we've got to pick a winner. We sure do. Whose fail is going to win? If that makes sense. Whose fail? I'm going to say it, mate. I reckon. Um, Having a flat battery on the Fraser mm, Island barge yeah, in front of everyone at Inskip Point. Yeah, no good. That'll do it for me. You've just no won way. yourself a $100 snatch voucher. Well done. Now, let's get into our rigs, rigs. mate. I love Ooh. this thing. Good rig. I know. You do. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, <laughs> here's a good one, Jocko. This is, a, this is up your alley, mate. An FJ55 on an 80 series chassis. That's pretty cool. That's up your alley as well. It, it really looks, is. It, it doesn't even look like a 55. It's so modified. Oh, it's, it, that looks ridiculous. What's going on <laughs> at the back here? You just chop for, for good departure angles. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. You know right. What I mean, yeah, you're it's, not... it's, a, it's a rig that gets out and drives, mate. The you wouldn't IMP. know much about it. No. Yeah, the old iron pig. You don't see many of those, mate. Oh, sometimes late on a pub on a Sunday night. Mm -hmm. You might see an iron pig every now and again, but to see <laughs> an old 55 that. series. Andrew. Uh, now, Dale, COVID. Oh, we're still doing yes. COVID things, are we? Mm. COVID project. Now no, using, now using. He built it explore, in Yeah, yeah, mm. to explore Europe. Station wagon snapped his chassis, so he started a ground up rebuild. Uh, what actually is it? It's a Defender, mate. It's a Defender. It's a defender but it's got a mad camper set up That's on the really back. That's really cool. He, the fact that he's gone back to bare metal mm. and built that thing from the ground up, Look at and he's out there now using it. I yeah. mean, you know, a lot of people had a fair bit of time in COVID, and he's used his wisely to build this thing up. And it's, yeah. I have a bit of a soft spot for Defenders as well. I you do, really you've cool. been talking yeah, about Yeah, I can see you as a Land Rover driver. Yeah, yeah in really the Land Rover Club. You, I'm good yeah. at working on cars and fixing all leaks. So. History podcasts and, yeah. and the Land Cruiser the Club desert. of Australia. If you could get in touch with Jock, I reckon you've got yourself a new member. Oh, they probably wouldn't take him. But no, they wouldn't take no. him. <laughs> Dale cracking a little build up, mate. Yep. Ooh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Have a look at this. Seamus. Yes. From one farm truck to another. Name on um, Yeah, look at this. This is a really cool. I, what I like seeing is an old rig that's been restored. It's, Tastefully. It's, but what it does is it's saving a piece of Australian history. Yeah. You, you're yeah. taking an old land cruiser. That, a lot of them end up in the tip and say with a lot of old cruisers, patrols, you name it, old cars. But when someone puts the effort and time in, the resources yep. to bring that back, just like we've done here. And that's an remarkable. international build too. It's not in Australia. So it'd be even more unique wherever it yeah, is. Yeah, it's probably worth a lot then if it's overseas. Mm -hmm. I know in the States, these things go for huge money. So it's a very cool rig. It if, is, if you, look, if you want to swap with the farm truck, I've got obviously way more mods. You'd have to throw a carton of beer my way, but I'd be keen for a swap. Oh, what have we got here? Jamie's MQ on 35s. That looks like an absolute weapon. So Triton MQ. Mm? Yeah, Triton well, MQ, not an MQ patrol. Yeah, yeah, yeah good, yeah, good, yeah. good. good, good it's it's like, I was going to say, he's really buffed that thing up nice if it was <laughs> yeah. an old, dirty old MQ. No, no, there's no, no. rust in the gutters yeah. or anything. It doesn't yeah. even have gutters. It's quite no. nice, isn't it? It just shows basic mods and just he's got he's got an eye for detail. Looks like, like he wheels it too. That's pretty good. bar work all yeah. around it. Nice. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's nice work, Jamie. Jamie, nice we approve. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, Ebony look at and this. Yeah, look at that. Then this is what you've been talking about, mate. Mm -hmm. Getting yourself a little, a little uh, toe anywhere tinny. Mm -hmm. Take it just about anywhere. That's uh, exactly I'd what like he's to doing. see you in a car very similar to that. I think it'd do a lot for your stature. Yeah, that's TV right. Forty two. It'd just uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I look. I think that's a cool. That's a cool rig, man. I look. look I, I, I've always. Isn't? That's a. Is that a three liter? No, I, can't, patrol. I don't think so. I don't think they had that on the side. I don't know enough I think it's a TD-42. Yeah, I think it's a TD-42, mm -hmm. okay. so it's the real McCoy. Apologies, patrol owners out there. I don't apologise to It's the real McCoy. What are you saying about three litres? I'm not. Our camera car's a three litre, doesn't yeah, it? It's a well. weapon. Yeah. Well, it's a weapon. Lucky to get here. Graham, so a divide amongst the Nissan ranks. No, I like no, this. no. All mm. Nissan drivers know they're just waiting for their three litre to blow up so they can put a 42 in there, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, you know it. You know it. Nah, it's a cool rig, this one. Ooh. Ooh this is cool. Now, I've got a soft spot for badges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, as I say, badges get. This one here, pad, Padge on 37s. What? No. And, yep, it is in, in X mouth. Have a look at it on 37s. Jeez. I'll repeat that again. It might be the, the, for the fourth time. <laughs> it might be the, the only time you'll see a Padge on 37s. Yeah, yeah, fully independent, bus. I think. I like it. I really like it. I've taken a photo of my mm. vehicle right there as well, just for anyone yeah. who cares. Yeah. Yep, no, is that no, a nan up? Yep. Uh, no, the next mouth, it says it right there. So, oh, yeah. There you go. Nah, that's a cool rig, man. Right, we're gonna pick a winner. Everybody I'm gonna say out. the Padge, can I? You can say the Padge, Jock. Yeah, I think the Padge. Oh, yeah. The Padge on 37s mm -hmm. is really cool. Okay. So big congratulations on the Padge. Um, $100 Snatch gift voucher going your way. Congratulations. Well done, mate. It's a really cool rig. How do you win? Either fails or rigs. Of course, it's very, very simple. Just use the hashtag 4WD247RIGS or fails. 
Uh, on TikTok, oh, TikTok, <laughs> TikTok, TikTok, these it's old. So hard. Give me a break, guys. Give me a break. I've been in a ruddly old car for quite some time. There's something called TikTok out there. I would never clue what that is. It's very popular. It is real forward. popular. Is have a look at the Forward Drive 24/7 one. It's it's really popular, mate. I actually have had a look at it. Oh, I bet you've looked at a few other pages, mate. Not that yeah. one. Anyway, <laughs> also Instagram and yeah. of course Facebook. Facebook, our official um, yep. Facebook group. Yep. yep. Yeah, it. exactly right. So Use get in that. touch with us, and um, we love hearing from you guys. Absolutely obviously. We do. Um, well, I reckon that's about us, mate. Oh, I'm I am dangerously, dangerously low. And it's getting me. super cold, we're getting a fire going. I just want to reinforce what you said, mate. There's mm. so many platforms out there that Forward Drive 24 7 have got access yeah, to yeah, that you guys are obviously using every day. Yeah. Get, get in touch with us because we love to hear from you guys. Make sure you follow us on TikTok, Graham, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, make sure you turn your notifications on and subscribe to our YouTube channel yep. because that way you won't miss a second of the action. What have we got coming up, mate? Oh, there's so much, mate. There's so much. Like, Epic. I was lucky enough <clears> to do Cape York. And look, this is my 12th time to Cape York. I'm going to say, hands down, the best Cape York trip I have ever ever done full stop except for that eastern cape trip which we did Houses. that was a really cool one but Houses. for so many reasons i did the telly track the first up there the first to drive palm creek the first to do cockatoo the first to do gunshot no other vehicle had done it for the season okay caught some really cool fish had some epic camps and talk about water in vehicles you're gonna it's gonna be non-stop action mate <laughs> I was about to say what I've been up to, but now I've got all Go on, <laughs> Go on. you went to well, a few nice caravan parks, did you? Yeah, we went to a couple of big fours <laughs> and uh, we, had, we had lunch at three o'clock and it was lovely. We had Tim Tams and watched TikTok, which is very similar. No, you, you don't do that sort of stuff, do you? No, not at all, mate. We did actually come. Oh, this is my second time back in the Simo in the last uh, four weeks. Wow. So we did the yeah. Udendata track. Udendata was flooded. We had to get through it. We were delayed. We got stuck at the Udendata pub, which hadn't opened in five years. Really? The day we got there, the pub was opened. Wow. Let's just say we had quite the night at the Udendata pub. I and all did. the guys that we had a good night out with, you know who you are. Thank you so much. Jocko, what have you been up to? Mate, uh, I've been very busy. Been a busy little boy preparing for the US. Oh, oh that's yes. just around the corner. In fact, just the corner. I just got notification to say my vehicle has landed in the US. Ooh. So Ooh, it's spicy. there. It's there and ready. And um, we'll be getting ready for that one really soon. That's the longest water crossing you can do. It really is, mate. There was a tough drive, but um, I did a bit Big of left right good night and I got mm -hmm. through. And, mm -hmm. no. I mean, does everyone out there know that the three of us, we are all going to the US? To the US. Can the US handle us? It's a dangerous day to be in Vegas, I tell you that. <laughs> it really would be. <laughs> Hangover part seven, I tell you what. We'll this will be my second time in the US this year as well. Went over to King of the Hammer, so I'm ah. pretty keen to get back. Yeah, we, 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 we were driving some really cool stuff in some cool rigs, of course. I'm excited about that one, yep. but for now, I'm going to say a big cheers and thank you for tuning in again from to the Beers in the Shed. Live from the Simo. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Jocko. The, the adventure continues. Let's get a fire going. I'm See you next there. time. Cheers, guys.